This code kicks off by importing various modules and functions from different libraries. Each import statement has a unique role to play first up. We have import os, which pulls in the built-in Python module. This module provides the means to interact with the operating system, making it indispensable for any file or directory operations. Next in line is import autogen, which brings in a custom module named autogen. Custom modules like these are often tailored to specific requirements and functionalities that are not covered by standard libraries. Following that, we see from Authogen, cache import cache. This statement imports the cache class from the cache module within the Autogen package. It's useful for managing temporary storage and ensuring that data retrieval is efficient and streamlined. Then, there is from FinRobot, Gidel's import register keys a function. This snippet pulls in a function named register keys a function from the Gidel's module of the FinRobot package. It's a handy utility for reading keys from JSON files and registering them for further use. Along the same lines, from FinRobot, Toolkits import register toolkits brings in another function. Register toolkits, from the toolkits module of FinRobot. This one is likely geared towards setting up various tools and utilities needed for specific tasks. Moreover, from FinRobot, Functional import indicates an import of multiple utility classes and functions from the functional module of the FinRobot package. This hatch all statement ensures that all relevant functional utilities are available for the script. We also have from FinRobot, Detascore import Fimputils, which imports the Fimputils class from the Detascore module of the same FinRobot package. This class is probably designed to facilitate data handling and processing tasks. Last but not least, we come to from TextWrap import Dedent. This function, imported from the TextWrap module, is specifically used for cleaning up multi-line strings by removing common leading whitespace. It's a real lifesaver for string formatting. All these import statements serve a specific purpose and are crucial for the script's functionality. By Harry picking only the necessary functions and classes from each module, we keep our code not only organized but also efficient and easy on the eyes. This code snippet is part of a Python script that simplifies the setup and configuration for a particular project. Let's walk through what this code does step by step. First off, the autogen. Config list for Mison function is invoked to read configuration settings from a GSON file located at OKConfig list. This function takes a filter dictionary as an argument allowing for tailored configurations. Here, the filter specifies that only settings for the model GUPT4125 preview should be retrieved. This means it's zeroing in on the configurations needed for that particular version of the model. Once the configurations are gathered, they're stored in a variable named config list. Next up, a dictionary named longconfig is constructed. This dictionary includes three keys config list. Timeout and temperature, the config list key holds the configuration details previously fetched. The timeout key is set to 120 seconds, indicating how long the process should wait before timing out. Finally, the temperature key is set to 0, 5, which likely controls the randomness of the model's output. A common setting in machine learning models. Moving on, the script then calls the register keys a function function to load necessary API keys from another JSON file located at config API keys. This step is crucial for enabling the script to access various services required during the configuration process. Next, a new directory named report is created at the location. Report using os, mectors, the function includes the parameter exist.true. Ensuring that if the directory already exists, no exception will be thrown. Which allows the script to proceed smoothly. This directory will probably be used to store reports generated from the configurations. In a nutshell, this code snippet pulls and filters configurations for a specific model. Sets some essential parameters, loads API keys, and sets up a directory for storing reports. Automating these tasks through code helps ensure consistency in the setup process, cuts down on manual errors, and makes the whole configuration process faster and more efficient. The code kicks off by setting up a multi-line string variable named system message. 
It employs the Deden function to strip away any uniform leading spaces in the string. This nifty function is quite beneficial for keeping the text within the code neatly indented for readability. While ditching the excess white space when the string is actually assigned to the variable. In essence, the code is laying out a comprehensive system message. This message likely spells out a role, its responsibilities, objectives, and performance indicators. Along with a specific instruction for the reader, namely, to reply terminate once everything is settled. It seems to be part and parcel of a system or communication module. This module potentially belongs to a program or system where it's crucial to present structured information to users in a neat and formatted style. Using this chunk of code is essential for keeping the message layout readable within the code itself, while ensuring that it appears clean and properly formatted when it is displayed or utilized in the program. By leveraging didn't, the code's legibility gets a significant boost, and the final message comes across exactly as intended, devoid of any haphazard leading whitespace. In this code snippet, we see a series of toolkits and functionalities being registered for a user role dubbed expert. These tools are instrumental for tasks tied to report analysis, and their cohesive integration ensures seamless workflow for the expert user. First on the list is Fimputils, gets a report. This function plays a crucial role by retrieving the crawl and filing date of the SEC Securities and Exchange Commission report. It's an essential tool for anyone needing quick access to these critical financial documents. Next up is Epathon Utils, displays image. This utility is tailored for displaying images within the Epathon environment. Adding a visual element that can enhance data presentation and interpretative analysis. Then there's text utils, hack text length, which, as the name suggests, checks the length of the text. This simple yet effective tool helps ensure that text data conforms to expected or required lengths. Preventing errors or formatting issues down the line, report lab utils, built hand qual report comes in fourth. Providing the capability to craft annual reports in a polished GIF format using the Report Lab library. This functionality allows experts to produce professionally designed documents with ease. Additionally, Report Analysis Gittel seems to bring expert knowledge to the table for analyzing reports. While its exact functions aren't detailed, it's clear this toolkit is geared towards deep dives into report data. Aiding comprehensive analysis, similarly, report chart utils likely affords expert insights for plotting charts related to reports. By integrating this toolkit, experts can visualize data trends and patterns, enhancing interpretative clarity and presentation quality. Collectively, these registrations empower the expert role with a suite of robust tools. They make it possible to access and analyze reports, plot related data charts, manage text, display images, and build detailed PDF reports, all with efficiency and effectiveness. This strategic toolkit assembly ensures that an expert can perform their tasks with greater precision and professionalism. The snippet you're looking at outlines a function called quarter trigger sender. This function's primary job is to peek at the sender's last message to see if it contains the phrase instruction resources saved to. If it does, the function flags it. On another note, there's a function named Porter Message Repeat. Messages, Sender, Config. This one swipes through the most recent message the recipient got. Hunting for an order instruction, it's kind of like a detective. Quickly gathering clues from the message exchange. Moving along, the expert has a clever trick up its sleeve with the method expert. Register nested chats. This registers a nested conversation between the expert and its counterpart. Expert shadow. Based on specific conditions, the chat kicks off if order trigger gives the green light and quarter message steps in to handle the conversation. There's a limit here, though the chat won't go back and forth more than twice. And it keeps things hushed, no loud announcements. The utility of this code lies in its ability to streamline order handling. By spotting messages that carry instructions and pulling the needed information swiftly. This code helps in keeping the order train on the tracks. Ensuring that everything runs smoothly without missing a beat. 
In this piece of code, the task description is being crafted specifically for Microsoft and is centered around the fiscal year 2023. The instructions come alive through a multi-line string, which uses string formatting to lay out a clear roadmap for drafting an annual report. This report will be based on Microsoft's 2023 10 filing and will eventually be rendered into a formatted PDF document. The task is outlined with several key guidelines to ensure everything runs smoothly. To start with, it demands an explanation of the working plan before diving into the actual work. This sets the stage, laying down the foundation for a well-organized task execution. Following this is a sequence of operations that need to be carried out using various tools. Each step meticulously planned out, moreover, all file manipulations are to be conducted within a specified directory. Referred to as WorkDir, this keeps everything in one place and avoids unnecessary confusion. Visual elements, if any, generated during the process should be shared in the chat. Making the workflow transparent and interactive, a significant detail of the task is the requirement for the final document to be concise yet comprehensive. Falling within a specific word count range, that wing 400 to 450 words, before it is converted into a PDF. This sharp focus on word count ensures clarity and precision, adhering to professional standards. Overall, this coding snippet is more than just a set of instructions. It's the backbone of setting up a task or assignment aimed at producing a detailed, well-structured report. By providing clear guidelines and firmly set expectations, it paves the way for efficient task completion, ensuring each step aligns perfectly with the end goal. To install the PMOOP GIF library with Python's PIP package manager, you'll want to use a specific command. PyMoopDiff serves as a Python interface for the MoopDiff library, providing a suite of tools to handle PDIF files with ease. Once you've run the command, the PyMoopDiff library will be added to your Python environment, empowering you to read, write, and manipulate PDIFs through your code. Simply put, by integrating PyMoopDiff into your projects, you can seamlessly work with PDIF files programmatically. Whether that means extracting text, modifying existing documents, or creating new ones from scratch, this library opens up a world of possibilities for handling DT files within your Python scripts, making it an invaluable resource for developers who frequently work with this file format. This code snippet is designed to work with TDFs using the PMOOP diff library. Also known as FITS, what it essentially does is open a PDIF file and load its first page. From there, it retrieves the PIC map, which is a way to handle the page as an in-memory image. To transform this into a more universally accepted format, the code uses the PillowPill library to convert the PIC map into a ping image. Finally, although not included in the snippet, the ping image is displayed using an unspecified display function. The FITS library serves as a powerful tool for dealing with PDFs. It enables us to extract a variety of elements like text and images from these files. In this instance, the objective is to pull an image out of the PDF. On the other hand, the PIL library comes into play to make the extracted image data more accessible by converting it into a format that is easier to display or manipulate. To sum it up, the code is a handy way to extract images from BDIF files and process them further for a range of applications. Whether it's for simple display purposes or more detailed content analysis, this combination of libraries gets the job done efficiently.